talking about what to do when your client says, I don't know when they're disengaged, when they're shy, when they're quiet. This came up in our Facebook community and one of our members, Bex, said it felt like pulling blood from a stone when she has clients like this, when they're just like, oh, I don't know what I wanna focus on, I'm not really sure. You know, they're just, just not really engaged and not really giving you as the coach a lot to work with. So I know this is a really common um, sort of worry and doubt or fear as a new health coach, you know, wondering, what's gonna happen when this happens? Or, you know, maybe you do have clients that you're actually working with and you're noticing that, you know, they're kind of disengaged, they're just, I don't know, you know, not really sure. And, you know, feeling like you're just really needing to pull, you know, the information from them. Um, so, so that can be tough, right? It can feel really discouraging as a new coach. It can feel frustrating. And chances are, you know, you tend to blame yourself. You think, what am I doing wrong? You know, why aren't they engaged with me? Aren't I asking the right questions? Aren't I doing the right things? Um, and, you know, that can really, you know, start to tear away at our confidence as new coaches when we feel like that. Um, I know, I, I think back to, you know, early days in my coaching practice, and I definitely had some clients like this, and, and I know I felt that way. Felt really discouraged and felt like I just really wasn't showing up and, and not doing the right things, not asking the right questions, and not engaging my client enough to, you know, want to do the work. So I, I really understand how that can feel. So um, today I've got six tips that I want to share with you in terms of how to deal with this kind of situation and hopefully by the end you'll, feeling, you'll feel like you've got some questions, some tools in your toolkit to be able to deal with these types of clients sort of with, with ease um, so that you're not dreading you know, those types of client interactions. So let's get to it. Um, the first thing that I wanted to share around this is that it's really important early on, like in the health history, in that discovery session, in your sales call, for you to really be gauging if this client is going to be a good fit for you. You know, so you're asking high mileage questions, you're giving them space, you're really holding space for them to show up and share. Um, and, you know, if, if they're sort of one word answers, if they don't really know, that's probably gonna be a flag for you that maybe this client isn't really ready for a coaching process at this point. Um, so I think, you know, using that initial, uh, you know, uh, that initial experience with your client to really gauge and assess, are they gonna be a good fit for me? Are they someone who's open and curious and sharing and have a lot that they wanna work on? You know, or are they reserved and kind of holding back and not really sure and, you know, giving you those one word answers? Those are gonna be some flags early on that maybe that's not the greatest client for you. And I'll say, you know, I, I was thinking back on this one and what I've noticed is that yes, absolutely early on in my coaching career when I was doing a lot of free health histories, I got, you know, some people who were coming to those sessions not really wanting or not being serious about coaching. Uh, they just wanted to see what it was all about or, you know, see who I was, but they weren't serious about actually hiring me as their health coach. So. What I have noticed over the years though, is this kind of thing happens less and less where the client's disengaged, where they don't know what to say, or they don't really have a lot to share. Um, because what I find is that once someone is absolutely ready to hire you, they're paying you good money to be a health coach, they've got stuff they want to work on, right? They're not just, you know, giving you that money for no reason. So I think what you're going to find, yes, this may happen early on. I think as you get into your coaching practices, you know, people are paying good money, they're showing up, you're doing the work together. I think you're going to find that this happens less and less. People are going to be engaged when they're paying good money to be coached, to be in a coaching relationship, to go through a coaching program, they're going to be engaged. They're going to have stuff that they want to work on. They're going to have health and wellness goals that they need your support with. So not to minimize this at all, because I know it's, it's a real thing out there. It, it really does happen to get these types of clients and how discouraging it, it, discouraging it can be. But I think bottom line, if someone's paying you good money to be their coach, just like we would with anything, paying a fitness trainer, paying a therapist, we're gonna show up and we're gonna do the work. We've got skin in the game, right? So I just wanted to, to share that um, piece as well. The other thing that I was wondering, you know, that might be happening is that if these are pro bono clients 
or you know people who are not paying you you're using them as practice clients so they're free clients early on again they probably don't have a lot of skin in the game um, they haven't made an investment maybe they're a friend or family member who is doing this sort of as a favor to you um, so that might be the reason why they're why they're not that engaged in the process so you know there's just a lot of factors you know to think about number one just assessing engaging during that health history are they going to be a good fit do they have some real work they need to do are they ready for a coaching process um, and you know are they a free pro bono client you know so just looking at the reason why this client might be a little bit disengaged and, and not really having a lot to work on I think is is sort of the first point that I want to make so the second thing that I wanted to share is that it's really so important to establish that trust and rapport early on in the coaching relationship so that the, com that the client does feel comfortable to open up, that they feel safe, that, that they feel heard and witnessed and seen um, by the coach um, so that they can really open up and share. You know, if, if, if you haven't done that, if you haven't laid the foundation, that might be one reason why, why they're not fully engaged. Um, so number one you also have to set a really clear coaching agreement so so important as the foundation of a, of a coaching relationship that's going to outline the partnership right that we each have rights roles and responsibilities both the coach and the client do the, the client has a big responsibility as they show up to the coaching um, so that agreement is so important so that they know what to expect they know what coaching is all about they know that it's a conversation that it's questions that it's them answering them exploring um, as opposed to thinking that they're just coming to get your advice right so it, depending on how you've set up that coaching relationship you know may indicate and, and sort of uh, you know direct a little bit in terms of how the clients going to show up so making sure that that coaching relationship the value proposition of coaching that you've explained exactly what they can expect because again if they're expecting you to be the expert and then you get in there and you start asking them a bunch of questions what do they want to do what do they want to focus on and they're expecting you to tell them all of that then that might throw them off a little bit so really making sure that you're laying that solid foundation so that trust and rapport you know comes from a lot of things it comes from the agreement it starts at that very first introduction that you have to the client during that discovery call during that health history it's going to come from your personality how warm and you know compassionate and empathetic you are to the client um, it's going to come from your coaching presence you know how do you show up to that first session um, and as well you know trust and rapport is built so much from our active listening skills really listening in seeing and hearing the the client and listening on all the different levels that we know we should be listening at um, and then reflecting back right so the client knows we really hear and see them so I think setting the foundation having that agreement and really establishing that trust and rapport is really really important to help the client feel ready to open up and share so the third tip that I have for you is that we really also need to spend time in those first few sessions, I like to call those foundation sessions, doing some exploration and uh, uh, self-exploration with the client. We're doing some assessing, we're doing some inventories. So this is going to provide a lot of the material that you're able to mine, you know, when you get to those ongoing coaching sessions. So I think, you know, if you're not at this point doing things like the circle of life, health and wellness inventories or assessments so the client can gauge where they are around their health and well-being and identify areas that they want to work on you really should be doing those you also want to be doing assessments like values assessments assessing their strengths really helping them identify all of those things you want to spend a, a great deal of time in those first few sessions talking about their vision and what they see for their health and well-being down the road and then of course you're going to spend time in a goal setting um, process process as well um, developing an action plan so if you've done all of that you know that's just a ton of material for you to be able to mine with the client to go back to to find areas in which to explore things that they want to work on um, and areas of focus that they might have so that's really really important in those first few sessions to be doing that 
you know, exploration with the client, having them do their own self-exploration, setting the foundation, doing some assessing and inventories, circle of life, all of those good tools that can really develop that foundation. So um, that was my third tip. The fourth one is that I really find it helpful to send a prep form in advance of the coaching session. So I, I do that for a number of reasons, but primarily it's so that the client can start thinking about what do they want to work on, what is going to be the focus of our coaching session, you know, this week. Um, so by getting the client to really explore that in, you know, before the session, they're going to come to the session with some ideas. Um, so and then once you get into the session you just really confirm that thank you for sending the prep form i know that you mentioned today you want to focus on exercise is that still you know what you want to focus on today and then you kind of get into it um so yeah the, so so de definitely sending the prep form there's also work that you as the coach can do before the session if you're noticing that every time your client comes and they really don't have a lot to share they don't know what they want to focus on so you as the coach go back through all those materials right go back to the welcome packet go back to the notes that you took during the health history of the discovery session go back to um, all those different assessments and inventories and you know you can jot down down. you know the, the client mentioned you know mood they mentioned stress they mentioned weight they mentioned lack of energy they mentioned sugar cravings you know list all of those things out so when you come to the session you're prepared with a bunch of ideas that they've already identified you know through your previous interactions um, so that's a great way and then you know if you get to the session and the client says I don't know what I want to focus on today you know what do you think I should focus on you as the client you know can absolutely remind the client you know I, I went through our notes and you know I remember you saying you know X Y or Z you know these are all things that you mentioned in the past that were important to you things that you wanted to work on you can go back to their overarching vision their goal what they set for themselves what they wanted to work on um, so all that foundation is already there so you're just reminding them this is what we've already talked about this is what you've identified you know are any of those areas resonating with you today so um, we're reminding the client of, you know, why you engaged me as your coach in the first place. You know, what was your initial reason for hiring a health and wellness coach? Um, let's go back to that. Um, great. So the other thing within that is, I, you know, I always want to give permission to new coaches to use your gut instinct, your intuition, you know, so you could be saying something like, well, you know, do I, can I have permission to maybe share a, a gut instinct that I have? Or, you know, I, I hear you mention, um, you know, your moods over and over and over again. I hear you mention or you repeat this sort of pattern that you're stuck in over and over again. You know, I, I'm sensing that, I'm hearing that, I'm noticing that. Using that kind of language, you know, is going to number one help the client uh, feel like they've been heard and seen and witnessed that you have been listening to them that you have understood and then that can as well prompt you know oh yeah I kind of forgot that that was you know something I was worried about or thinking about yeah that would be a great topic for today so that was tip number four just kind of get prepared before the session with some ideas um, making sure that the clients thinking about it and that you're prepared as well with a variety of different topic ideas the fifth tip that I have for you, so if you've gone through all of those other things, you've done all of that great, you know, and you still get to the session and the client's like, I don't know, I'm not sure, I, I don't know what I want to work on today. Um, you know, there are a whole host of really great, powerful, high mileage questions that we can use to sort of bring out for the client. I mean, that's our job, right? To elicit, to evoke from the client, you know, what's important to them and what do they want to work on. So um, I'll, I'll share a number of these high mileage questions with you if you just want to jot them down. Um, so again, we're, we're talking about open-ended questions, high mileage questions, powerful questions. And when we ask those, then we're reflecting back. We're using those active listening skills. Um, so some of those questions, you know, could be as simple as, you know, what could be a couple of choices for today? You know, what's coming up for you that you want to work on? If there's one thing that you're struggling with, worried about, challenged by right now, you know, what is that? What's one thing you'd like to resolve or work through? 
Um, reflect back on your week. You know, is there anything that came up for you that was a challenge or a struggle where you felt off in any way? Maybe that's an idea. Also, you know, maybe if your client comes in and they're, they're sort of stressed out, they're rushed, we might just need to give them a moment to breathe. You know, take a moment, catch your breath, close your eyes, just focus in. We might do a little grounding and centering exercise with them and really help them tap into what's important to them right now. You know, take a moment, take a breath. What does your gut tell you, you know, is important to work on today? That's a great question. Um, we could also kind of throw it out there. Well, if you did know what you should work on, what would that be? I find that, you know, is it, isn't a great question. I haven't had a lot of success with that, but, but you know, if you did know, what would it be? Um, of course, then we have our magic wand question, which is always so great in these types of situations. If you could wave a magic wand, you know, how would you want to change? What would you change right now? What would you make better or improve upon right now? So that magic wand question is a great one to get them to think about, you know, what, you know, if I had any, anything's possible, what would I change? What would I work on? Um, another high mileage question, if you could change anything in your life right now that would have the biggest impact on your health and well-being, what would that be? So that's going to help narrow it in a little bit. Also, again, brainstorming is always a great coaching technique when our client is stuck, when they don't know what to do. So let's just put down all the ideas, you know, of things that you'd like to work on, that you'd like to change, all the ideas that I've noticed. So, you know, you could do a back and forth, the client offers an idea, then you as the coach off offers an idea, and you come up with a list of all the different topics and the areas that the client might want to focus in on. And then from there, you know, the client gets to choose the priority. Okay, well, what resonates for you today of that list? So brainstorming is a great, a great way to go about it. You know, the high mileage question, what keeps you up at night? What worries you? You know, when you're lying there in bed at night, what are you worried about? Um, what on your to-do list do you keep putting off? You know, is there something that's just not, that you're not getting to? Let's look at that. Um, the future state question can be good or the sort of the telescoping question. You know, imagine six months or a year from now and things keep going just as they are. You keep going in the same patterns and doing what you're doing. Where would you be? What would happen? What would the outcome be? You know, would things get worse? Would there be any ne negative impacts? So telescoping out and really seeing if you keep going down the same road, what's going to happen? Um, maybe just even asking, you know, what's your greatest health and wellness challenge right now? You know, kind of coming back to some of those basic questions. Another great technique sort of in a situation like this, sometimes the client's stuck in the weeds and they just can't, can't see sort of what's important for them. So we invite them to rise up. So there's a lot of different ways that they could do this, but one way, you know, is to think about, you know, you say to the client, imagine you're in a grand theater and you're up sitting in the balcony and you're looking down on the stage and, you know, there's actors and they're performing your life right um what where would they be right now what act would they be in you know if you look back sort of from that higher perspective on your life where are you right now what are you struggling with what are you challenged by so sometimes it's just nice to bring some perspective right looking at it from a different angle from a different point of view you know where would the actors be right now what act of your life would they be in what challenge or struggle would they be working through, right? So it just kind of brings that perspective a little bit. Another one is to ask them what other people might think, right? Sometimes we don't know, you know, we're too close to an issue. So we could ask something like, you know, what would your partner, your best friend, your mother, your sister, your child, what would they suggest, you know, is important for you to work on right now? That's, you know, a challenge for you. What does your highest or wisest self tell you is important to work on right now? Um, if you couldn't fail, you know, what would you do right now? If, if, you know, what would you work on? What would you want to tackle if you knew that you couldn't fail? That's a really high mileage and powerful question. If money were no object, what would you do? Another good run, right, to bring some perspective. So there's a whole list of high mileage questions that we can really use with our clients to help elicit, evoke, to dig deeper, to you know rise up, to look at that vision of where they wanna be, what those goals are, um, to help find that topic of what's gonna relate to them today, what's important to them now. And then my sixth 
tip for you today you know for clients who are um, you know saying they don't know they're not quite sure um, I, you know it's really our responsibility as coaches you know we're holding a coaching relationship we have an agreement with a client it really is our job to just be frank and honest with the client about what's happening um, I've never really had to do this in my own coaching practice but you know absolutely we need to have this in our toolkit in case it ever comes up but we just really want to get curious with our clients whenever we notice um, you know that there's a shift maybe things have been going great and all of a sudden things change and the client is now withdrawing They're becoming a little bit more reserved. They're not opening up as much if you notice any shift like that It really is your job to address it. Um, it might be uncomfortable But you know, that's that's really the the territory that we're in here, right? Um, so it is our job Sorry about that uh, so what we want to do is we want to get curious with the client, um, you know, saying something like, I'm just curious, you know, you signed up for coaching to work toward your health and wellness goals, but I'm noticing that in the last couple of sessions, you know, there's a hesitancy, there's a reluctance, um, there's not as much engagement as there was. Um, just wondering if something has changed since that first session, you know, has something changed with you? Is coaching still right for you? Is it still working for you? Is there something that we need to adjust or tweak, you know, in our coaching process? So this is part of our ongoing evaluation with our clients about our coaching relationship. If we notice a change, if we notice a shift, we absolutely have to address it. And if the client says, you know, coaching isn't right for me now, something's happened, something's changed, I feel like another route, then absolutely we let our client out of the coaching contract. Um, so that, that's a really important sort of coaching competency and, uh, uh, you know, just when it comes to the ethics and legalities around coaching, it is our job to notice this kind of thing. Also, you know, if the client is now not a right fit for you, you get a couple of sessions in and you feel like this just isn't working for me, um, you know, this isn't a right fit, then absolutely you, you know, have that conversation, let the client know, be there as a support to help them find the right person for them, um, and then, you know, just come to a, a decision that you're going to end the coaching relationship. So hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I think we need to know how to do that. We need to be prepared. Um, for how to have those difficult conversations and again it all comes back to our agreement if either one of us is not upholding our part of the agreement then we need to have a discussion and we need to talk it through all coming from that place of curiosity and really wanting to serve and um, really uphold the best for our clients so um, those are my tips. Um, so those six tips to, you know, help sort of re-engage or, or get engaged with our client. Um, we start with uh, really uh, gauging, you know, during that health history, if they're a right fit for us. Um, establishing that rapport and trust early on during the agreement. Um, doing some of that exploration, those assessments, those inventories in the first few sessions. Um, sending a prep form in advance and use the coach being prepared with some topic ideas that have already come up from the client. Um, and then uh, asking some of those high mileage questions that I shared to really elicit and evoke from the client what they want to work on. And then finally, you know, just maybe having a tough conversation if you need to, always just coming from that place of curiosity. How is this working for you? If it's not working for you, let's make a change. Um, so I hope that's been helpful today, those six tips to um, work through situations when your client doesn't know or they're unsure or they're sort of disengaged. Um, if you have any questions at all about any of those tips, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. And if you're not already part of my Facebook group, my Facebook community, I'd love to have you come over and join us there. It's a really great group of health coaches who are wanting to up-level their coaching skills. It's called Coaching Skills for Health Coaches, and I'd love to see you there. So thanks so much for tuning in today, everyone. Bye for now.